Hello watch lovers, welcome back to the channel. My name is Theon and today we're going to celebrate the beauty of Longin. We have this uh, 1965 uh, dress watch uh, on the bench. It's got an uh, 18k uh, yellow gold case. It's uh, a very simple watch, very understated. It's not part of any Longin series, so it doesn't say uh, Admiral or Conquest or that kind of thing on the dial. And we see the dial is in excellent condition. We see we can wind the watch, although it was pretty much fully wound. We can set the time and the watch doesn't have any other complications, so uh, that should make it easy. On the time grapher we see straight lines. Always good to see. Actually, the lift angle was set a little bit too high here, so the amplitude is a little bit lower than what it shows. It's still all right. This is a front loader watch, meaning that we need to take uh, the movement out through the front. So we can unscrew the clamps that uh, hold the movement in the case. And then we'll take off the bezel and get the movement out. And that's a fine dial. We get the hands off with our levers and then we can unscrew the dial screws. Typically there are two, one on each side of the movement that press on the dial feet and thus hold the dial in place. The dial and the hands are the most visible parts of the watch of course, so we're going to keep those safe. And then we can commence with the disassembly. We didn't actually have to take off the cannon pinion in this uh, movement. It has a different uh, type of cannon pinion, as we'll see later. One of the first things I want to note about this movement is uh, that it's just beautiful. It's a very simple movement, yes. But look at that mirror polished uh, ratchet wheel. Look at the finishing on the crown wheel. Look at those uh, gold uh, jewel settings. Simple movement, but really, really nice. And high quality. Longin uh, did have a few uh, things they did, maybe to just troll us uh, watchmakers, I'm not sure. One of them was this uh, sealed unit barrels that I frequently say uh, do not open. You'll find those uh, from other brands as well, but uh, Longin uh, like that. And uh, it's also clear that uh, Longin was not in favor of uh, watchmakers having uh, thick lush carpets uh, in their workshops or for hobbyists uh, in the living room next to their watch bench. So they came up with a foolproof way of uh, persuading anyone with a lush uh, thick carpet to uh, replace it. And we'll see that uh, in a short while. We're almost done with the disassembly already. It is a very simple movement, so uh, not too much to take apart. We're going to put the balance back in so we can take out uh, the shock setting. And then we're going to put uh, the movement into uh, the dishwasher. For the barrel, let's uh, not uh, disassemble it. We're going to take this as a test as well to see if we can reuse an old barrel like this. We are going to clean uh, the pivots a little bit. And as always, we also peg the jewel holes. But the watch is not very dirty, so uh, yeah. Perhaps a simple service this time. So with that, let's uh, get uh, the parts into the baskets for the cleaning machine. As you will see, we're not going to then clean the barrel. And I also leave out the screws and a couple of the tiny springs that uh, could get uh, damaged uh, in the cleaning machine due to them coming out through the mesh in these small uh, baskets. I'm fortunate enough to have this automatic uh, cleaning machine. That's something you really don't need unless you do this uh, for a living. But uh, when you do, it's uh, very nice. It's always nice to uh, press a button and have something done for you. Over to the case. 
it uh, does have a few marks, a few dents there at the back, but overall it's in uh, very fine condition. So we're not going to polish it. In general, we also don't uh, want to polish gold all that often because we do remove gold every time. Seems the crystal was glued uh, to the bezel, which uh, isn't really necessary. But uh, we will put in a new crystal a little bit later. So let's then put the case into the ultrasonic. And before we enjoy the sweet, sweet sound of the ultrasonic machine, I just want to thank my uh, YouTube members and Patreons. It really makes a difference, guys. Thanks so much. And if your name is not on this list and you are curious about the benefits and perks these guys get, you can uh, check out the join link underneath this video. Or you can check out the Patreon at this uh, link uh, on top here. And now... I have no idea who the previous 88 Vintage Watch services are. There are a few parts that we're going to treat with uh, something called epilam. Epilam is a substance that leaves a very thin film on the surface of uh, metal. And uh, that allows uh, the lubrication to stay in place better. So you saw that I immersed uh, the escape wheel and uh, the capstones in the epilam liquid. And then we're simply going to dip the pallet stones in the liquid. Now in a previous video I asked what career path uh, sadists uh, generally choose, whether it's a dentistry or working in customs. But it might be some of them also worked at Longines, because what the devil did they think uh, having uh, transparent capstones? I mean, if you enjoy walking around barefoot around your watchmaker's bench in your thick lush carpet and you accidentally lose your capstone, how on earth are you going to find it again? Anyway, let's check the balance. And that is just beautiful. All right, let's uh, continue with uh, assembling uh, the movement. This movement uh, has a few quirks. Longin liked uh, to do it this way in uh, some movements. The bearing for the third wheel on the train side is actually this little plate uh, that we're going to put on uh, here. That covers uh, the cannon pinion and also uh, the minute wheel. So with that bearing in place, we can then uh, turn the movement over and put in the train of wheels. So as the astute observer will have seen, there's no uh, center wheel on this watch. So it's a pretty modern construction uh, back in the day. The off-center uh, second wheel drives the third wheel, which uh, in turn drives both uh, the wheel that uh, the cannon pin is attached to on the dial side and the center seconds wheel. That is the way most modern movements are constructed, because it does allow for a slimmer profile of the movement. But back in the 1960s, that was still not uh, really common. So it's still a vacation time in Switzerland. We're uh, enjoying the heat, more or less. Talked about that in the last video as well. It's been crazy weather in Europe for a while. And uh, not only Europe, of course, but that's uh, where we live. So that's where we experience it. It's been kind of alternating between uh, extremely hot days and then some extremely strong winds, really strong storms. So in my own house, uh, we have a trampoline for the kids and I was uh, completely thrown around the whole property. Not that I have such a big property, but it was uh, yeah, probably thrown 10, 15 meters uh, away. And uh, one thing I noticed uh, for the heat, I'm a Norwegian. 
So to me, uh, it's more comfortable in minus 30 than plus 30, which means that I'm pretty much as helpless as a newborn kitten uh, if I don't have air conditioning. And somehow, I'm not sure this uh, applies to aircos everywhere, but for some reason, the airco never ever takes the first input. So I use the remote, right? I press the power button, nothing happens. And then I have to press the power button again because now the remote thinks that uh, the airco is on and that turns it off and that the airco recognizes. So then I have to press it away from the airco and then try again to press it on. And this happens every time. If I try to turn it off, nothing happens. Then I have to press it one more time and then one more time again. Yes, maybe not uh, really a threat to life as I know it, but uh, you know, we need our pet peeves. Anyway, we've gotten to uh, lubricating the pallets. Beautiful purple uh, rubies. And with the pallets and escape wheel teeth uh, lubricated, we can then put in the balance and see if uh, this baby is going to start up. And yeah, that looks uh, just nice. Let's uh, lubricate uh, the remaining jewel holes and then we can demagnetize uh, the movement and uh, put it on the time graffer. The lift angle for this movement is actually 50 degrees. And uh, after setting it to 50 and adjusting it a little bit, uh, we see this is uh, pretty well performing the movement. And uh, that's uh, with keeping this uh, sealed barrel. In general, I don't like to open sealed barrels because they can be really, really difficult to get back properly. They uh, deform very easily. So unless I have a replacement unit, I uh, try to just reuse it. And uh, as we see, that worked just fine, at least this time. The dial shows a little bit where around the edge, where the bezel presses down on it. That's not going to be visible when uh, the watch is cased anyway, but uh, there's also not too much we can do about it. So let's get the hand back on. The hands, even. When we put uh, the hands on, we check for each of the hands that uh, it is parallel to uh, the dial. And of course, that uh, the hands do not touch each other either. No touching hands. Sounds like a rule for my daughter in a few years. Speaking of my daughter, she uh, came to me the other day and said uh, she needs a day off. <laughs> She's on her school vacation where she has like 60 days off. So I asked her uh, why and she said, oh, it's just too much playing. I don't get enough sleep. Yeah, third world problem, I suppose, for kids. And the alignment seems fine. Putting the second sand on, uh, I noticed that it was a little bit uh, tarnished. So instead of pressing it on, I'm going to take it off again and uh, clean it a little bit. Simply use this uh, leather buff. And around the tube, uh, I use uh, some pegwood just to get uh, those sharp corners also cleaned. And with the second sand that clean up nicely, we can put it back on. Last thing we need to do then is uh, put on the bezel and the case back. We're going to put a new crystal into the bezel first. We use our crystal press for that. And everything is easier with a good tool. 
For the bezel, some of these old uh, bezels have uh, cutouts in them for the crown, or for the stem rather. So we see this one does, so we need to align that. It's far too common to see that they are not aligned and then you get marks in uh, the bezel. The clamps and the case screws uh, look a little bit uh, rudimentary, but uh, they do work, so we're going to leave them. And with that, we can press uh, the case back on, and there we have the watch. Before seeing the watch on the wrist, just want to remind everyone that at uh, vintagewatchservices.eu you'll always find more than 100 beautiful vintage watches. And if you're also a YouTube subscriber, you can use this coupon code for 10% off. And there we have it. Gorgeous 1965 Longines dress watch, 18k gold with its lovely movement inside it. So a simple service this time. I hope you still enjoyed it. And if you haven't already done so, make sure you subscribe and click like. And if you want to go deeper into watch repair than these videos, then make sure you also check out the membership options. I'll be back with another video shortly. Until then, ta-ta.